What is up all my maniacs out there? How you doing? It's your boy Abner and I'm back with another video. Another one. So today we're going to be talking about the difference between hybrid foods and non-hybrid foods. Have you ever been to the grocery stores and bought some watermelon, tangerine, oranges or grapes and you saw that they were seedless? Have you ever wondered why they were seedless? Um, no. You see it all the time in grocery stores. Seedless grapes, seedless watermelon, seedless tangerine, seedless orange, everything is seedless. A lot of the hybrid foods are going to be seedless and cannot be replanted into Mother Earth. So they cannot be reproduced. It's not a stable form of production of food. On the other hand, heirloom foods have seeds within them that can be replanted into Mother Nature and sprouted and grown into its beautiful form. Whether it's a tomato, grape, watermelon. The point is that heirloom foods give you the ability to eat the fruit and to replant it into Mother Nature so they can reproduce generation after generation. So the reason that farmers are growing these hybrid grains is because the companies kind of want to control where the food is coming from and I'll get into that a little later on. Another very obvious difference between a heirloom food and a hybrid food is that you're going to see a huge difference in the color, in the shape, and in the taste of a heirloom food. Heirloom foods are usually more vibrant in taste, vibrant in color, and they're very, very peculiar in shape, such as this tomato right here. As you can see, this tomato has a lot of stretch marks, a lot of weird mutation looking thing and even though this looks as if it were mutated it is actually the natural form of a tomato show me something natural like tomato with some stretch mark. on the other hand a regular tomato is not going to have these weird ridges and vibrant colors they're just going to be one color and they're all going to look uniform when they're put next to each other heirloom tomatoes on the other hand are different colored every single time and they're diverse every single time another difference is that heirloom tomatoes are going to be higher in nutrition they're going to be higher in the vitamins and the minerals and the phytochemicals antioxidant and all those other good things that your body needs in order for you to be healthy on the other hand when you're talking about hybrid foods a lot of hybrid foods are low in the vitamins are low in the minerals low in those phytochemicals that our body desperately needs nowadays one of the last differences that i want to kind of touch upon is is really what actually got me into eating more of a heirloom diet i have a huge intolerance to flour i can't eat flour and for me flour is a staple food i enjoy eating flour i've been eating bread since i could remember it is literally one of my most favorite foods i love sandwiches i don't care what's inside well i do care what's inside the sandwich obviously if not i wouldn't be making these videos but i love sandwiches like you can make me a sandwich and i'd love you forever okay i reached the age where i became intolerant to flour to gluten and for me that was a very hard um time of my life because i felt like as if almost everything was taken away from me. Flour was just one of those, but that included tomatoes, that included eggs, that included dairy, that included almost everything that you find in a grocery store, rice, you name it. I became sensitive to these foods and that caused me to dig deeper into why I was breaking out in the midst of eating these organic foods that were even organic, but I was still breaking out and I couldn't figure out why. Flashing forward a little bit, I was introduced to this guy called Dr. Sebi and he started talking about heirloom foods and how heirloom foods are natural and your body absorbs all the nutrients and the enzymes of these foods that are electrically alive. He started explaining how these hybrid foods are very toxic to your body and cause mucus production and all these other things in your body that heirloom foods originally don't. Being desperate in trying to recover my ability to eat this flour I started doing some more research and found a couple grains that I could actually consume, including einkorn, spelt, um, red fife. These flowers are all ancient grains that are heirloom that have been lost over time because of the overproduction of hybrid grains. They barely exist anymore. I was so surprised with the results of how these foods don't intoxicate my body that I started telling other people that had sensitivities to gluten. And I was, I'm, I'm over here like this crazy person telling people gluten is not the problem. Gluten is not the problem. The problem is the hybrid grains that these seed companies are feeding us in order to control profit. And that was what was going on within my body. My body wasn't rejecting the gluten. 
my body enjoys the gluten. Bread is a staple food that have allowed different nations and countries to thrive off this flour, off this grain. So how could my body reject it? It, it just didn't make sense to me. And whatever stuff Dr. Sebi was explaining it made so much sense. And then I tried it and it worked. And I tested it with other people and it worked. And real quickly, I want to go through the method of how our body recognizes this flour, this grain. We're going to use flour in this example. When I consume flour, it goes into my body. My body recognizes the food if it's a heirloom food and it breaks it down and absorbs all the, the phytochemicals, all the nutrients, the fiber, the minerals, anything that we originally it comes with and breaks it down and uses all the nutrients that it has within that grain and puts it wherever it needs to in my body. Now, that is how we were created to absorb food. Now, we were introduced to this new hybrid grain. When we consume these hybrid foods, what happens is that it goes into our body. Our body doesn't recognize these foods. It attempts to break it down as much as possible and it absorbs whatever nutrients that it can. And here's where the problem happens. When your body can't break down the excess food because it doesn't recognize it, your body either stores it as fat, leaks out of your gut and enters into your bloodstream which causes eczema, psoriasis, all these other ailments in the body like mucus production, low immune defense and these are kind of like the ailments that happen because your body can't break down these food. So what happens is that people start believing that it's the gluten and now you have all these trends going gluten free this, gluten free that which is not bad. Eating a gluten-free diet is not the worst thing in the world, but cutting off gluten because you believe it's bad for you is not something that is true. And that's kind of like the light that I want to bring in. It was a staple food thousands of years ago. It's going to be a staple food for the rest of, of humanity as long as we save these heirloom foods and we support these companies that do produce these heirloom grains. Because this is where all the culture, all the life of these foods are. It's within these heirloom foods that have learned to adapt over century and century and century. And these are the foods that are natural. Unlike hybrid food that are created within a lab, we don't know what they did in order to create those hybrid foods. And that includes organic foods that, that are created within a lab and they're sold to farmers to make a profit. And now I'm going to get into a little bit of the business side, how these companies make money off of these hybrid foods. Here's the thing. Before the production of hybrid foods, heirloom foods allowed anybody to grow any vegetable that they wanted to. When a businessman came in and saw that, they saw an opportunity to control the food through hybrid production. If you can control the food, you can control the people. And that was kind of like the idea behind this whole production of hybrid food. Now that they have a patent on these hybrid seeds, now business people can step forward and say, hey, we have this seed and the only way to label it organic is to buy from us. And since the farmers can't replant these hybrid grains, they're forced every year by contract to buy from the same suppliers. And the problem with this is that we're losing the culture that is within our food. We're losing the history that has made these beautiful seeds what they are. And the sad thing is that at the end of the day, it's always about what can make you more money. And this is really one of the ambitions behind producing these hybrid grains. In the midst of fighting non-GMO, which are good things, they're good things, don't get me wrong. But what happens happens is that what flies right over our head is the fight against vaccine and how they put aluminum in all our vaccines which causes problems and more ailments within our body. Then there's the problem of heirloom foods being destroyed and their culture. Nobody thinks about that, nobody really knows about that but we're losing the culture of our food. See, and my hope with this video is that you guys learn the difference between hybrid foods and heirloom foods and why it is so important to save the culture of these heirloom seeds that have been passed down from generation to generation. Food cannot be alive if you take away the life that created it. I hope you guys left a little bit more educated than when you came in. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. With that said, Maniac Squad out. You have fight.